So, PWM has a few problems. It turns out it's only great for driving high power devices, such as LEDs and DC motors, and for generating DC voltages with high input impedance. In the latter case, the bandwidth is very limited. So today, we'll turn the page and look at devices which are bad at driving high power loads, but have very high bandwidth. DACs, digital to analog converters. Let's start off with something basic, a resistor divider. One way of generating a voltage is to have a resistive voltage divider with many resistors. To generate a desired voltage, we simply connect DAC's output to the desired node. Selecting is normally done with an analog multiplexer, but instead of getting technical, let's just build a 3-bit DAC based on this principle. For a 3-bit DAC, we need 8 10 kilo ohm resistors connected in series. For simplicity's sake, I will be using Red Pitaya's output set to 1 volt as a reference voltage. Voltage buffer will be built on the other half of the breadboard because the power rails are split along the middle, allowing me to easily supply op-amp with plus minus 3.3 volt from Red Pitaya while providing 0 volt and the reference voltage on the other half of the rails. Do you think I'm complicating? Just future proofing for the next experiment. Instead of switches or a multiplexer, I will be using a jumper wire. Connecting different nodes naturally results in different voltages on the output. In this 3-bit system, each resistor represents 1 8 of reference voltage. To obtain a higher resolution, you would simply add more resistors. But the problem is, to acquire more and more bits, the number of resistors increases exponentially. For doubling the bit count from 3 to 6 bits, we would need 64 resistors. That's still a manageable number. How about adding just 2 more bits? Is 256 resistors st still manageable? What about 2048 for 11 bit version? Hmm. If you still think resistor count isn't a problem, Remember that each switch has a parasitic capacitance. This means lower bandwidth. And since we're going for high resolution, high bandwidth version, we have to keep on looking. One option is to use the same topology, but use a stage design. First stage generates a reference voltage for the next one. This uses significantly fewer components, but yes, one extra op-amp per stage. A good trade-off if you ask me, because 16 switches versus 64 for a 6-bit DAC is definitely worth an extra op-amp. But we can do even better. Take a look at this binary weighted DAC. 3-bit resolution and only 4 resistors and switches. Resistors values are different and that is a problem. But the number of switches, which are the bandwidth limiting factor, is reduced drastically. How does this DAC work? We have to use superposition and observe one input at a time. We can see that the output voltage directly reflects the binary code. Let's now discuss why resistors of different values would be a problem. Firstly, you can't buy any resistor of any resistance you like. Furthermore, it is very difficult to manufacture different batches of resistors to be exactly the same. For lowest variance, it is best to take resistors of the same batch with the same value and string them together to form bigger ones. This means that number of resistors in binary weighted DAC is exactly the same as in resistor divider DAC. But don't forget, maximum operating frequency has increased. 
Now it's time to make this DAC and verify it works. I'll be using same resistors as before, but this time I'll add switches for connecting inputs to ground or reference voltage, which will be once again 1 volt. Toggling bits, which are represented by switches, we can set the output to any voltage within the DAC's range. Now let's address the elephant in the room. The output voltage is inverted. That is because we used an inverting amplifier. Instead of wasting time on modifying this circuit to output a positive voltage, let's take a look at another circuit. An R2R DAC. Why it's called this way should be obvious. The circuit consists of just two different resistor values, R and 2R. In this design, output voltage is described as such. The nice thing about R2R DAC is that we can easily add more bits by stringing more R2Rs to it. Better yet, this does not affect the rest of the circuit as DAC's output resistance remains exactly the same. To find a circuit's output resistance, we have to set all voltage sources to zero. Now let's slowly work our way from left to right. Two 2Rs in parallel are equal to 1R. 2Rs in series is equal to 2R and the circuit now looks exactly the same as the one we started with. The only difference is that there is one input less. If we continue the process, we find that we are left with just one R. This tells us that an R to R circuit has an output resistance of R, regardless of how many bits a DAC has. This becomes useful for when we want to amplify DAC's output signal. Because by having constant output resistance, which is input resistance to the amplifier, we don't have to buffer the voltage first. Not that R2R DAC needs a voltage amplifier, but it's nice to have an option. Now with that out of the way, let's build a DAC. Let me quickly wire everything up. Reference voltage is still 1 volt, supplied by Red Pitaya, and input probe goes to the DAC's output. As expected, I can toggle bits and output voltage will reflect the voltage code. Because I can, I'll add a fourth bit and prove that everything still works as expected. Yes, yes it does. And with the least number of components of all DACs we've explored today. And there you have it. Three different DAC designs which you can use in your project. With first two you can transform binary code into non-linear output while R2R is extremely compact and easy to expand to multiple bits. For those wondering if resistor-based DACs are still being used commercially, I've seen a few R2R uh, designs these days, but uh, they're most commonly being replaced with transistors or switched capacitor designs. These are easier to manufacture. But before we fall into this rabbit hole again, like, share and subscribe and I hope you learned something from these videos. Bye!